Yo, 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 all you happy lost souls. How y'all doing out there? Just a quick little video. Um, some more of the archaeology based stuff here. I thought these pieces were really cool once they got cleaned up. Probably some sort of petrified wood or something to have all that cool banding. We got this cool little kelp that was left too. Again, these all being left at these pools of naturally occurring water that come out of this naturally fed creek known as the Penny Pack. Um, these are tools with some metals in them. Um, and uh, when someone says like, what, what is artifact patina? Um, you can see it a lot on this, all this black on top of the actual stone itself. Uh, this is a pressure flaking tool of some sort, possibly also dual use for woodworking, but you can see all the black pitch on it. Um, from the use from the hands. You can see it on these lighter chert tools too. You see it heavily on this, although I actually washed some of that patina off and chipped it off of the front of that tool. You can tell this is some sort of heat treating process. So you, can, you can hear that. So this is covered in patina, this, this kelp or this thin adds or woodworking type tool. And then, you know, you find more of these longer pressure flaking, woodworking type tools, and you start seeing all the cool geology. You can really see the garnet that's coming out of this. And this is a stratified or essentially a bandit metamorphic rock. So that only occurs like when the conditions or the plates are pushing part of the mantle of the earth up towards the surface. So you get all these things like quartzite and granites and they all become these melted bands like accordions um, and you can really see it down on, in the Wissahickon Valley uh, in that video I posted about the Olgum and that's they use the lines of that geological banding to put their Olgum through and they use them as their lateral lines you know, um, saving themselves some work on a very prominent area um, but again um, just uh amazing stuff in Pennsylvania right in people's backyards um, and I've been out recently uh, back to a couple of my sites and um, really trying to put a little more focus on pottery um, trying to identify some of the the time periods that we just don't have any written stuff from um, like I said the, the oldest accounts from this area along the creek were from Swedish uh, settlers and fur trappers of French and Dutch origin um, that were here between 1500 and 1600. And it was these early travelers and this early first contact that we have some written stuff from this area. But it'll all say there was no inhabitant area. There's no place where Native Americans were living. There's no valid village. There's no, you know, uh, stockaded um, living area or anything like that. Um, but yet we have tons of archaeology saying there have to be an active group of people living in the area of all the tools we see. Because we don't just see warfare tools. We see tons of agricultural type tools, domestic tools, um, stuff that's more benign. Um, and then it's the main activity of this tour, this quarrying, this production, this activity, um, this industry that's going on. I'm, I'm saying it's probably between 1000 uh, AD um, back to, you know, before Common Era BCE, back to about 1000 BCE. So that like 2000 year window. I'm going to give myself room. But I think a lot of this um, animal side profile worship being in, you know, endowed into the tools, like this emphasis on on decorating, like this hammerhead here. You see the notching to grab the, making it a composite tool to grab the handle there, and then you see this distinct striping, and this this paint that might have been left as a bird effigy, um, and then we've got ones that look more like a boar, <laughs> like that. Um, we can still. This is very hard to see when it's not wet, the eye on it, but um, this is the one with the eye on it carved into it. And this is the side profile of a boar. It's snout. You can see its ridge line up there still carved. Um, you can see its eye right, right where my thumb is right there. You can see the eyebrow, the 
pupil um, and on both sides and this side had this this red cinnabar uh, either running through it or it was an enamel or coating on it but this is a, a, a digging or earth moving or like a hoe like you know the agricultural type tool and boars dig in dirt a lot you see the eye better this direction so there's an eye it's like two-sided you can hold it either way and there's an eye there's an eye there and then there's if you hold it this way there's another eye there so a lot of duality going on with this animal FUG but you can really see the eyeball now and whatever that black dye or pigment was is faded but it was black on one side red on the other it's another very Native American type color combination, black, white, and red. Um, and then the blues, the greens, and browns and stuff, that, that, that's more of this Mayan or this Cahota type influence that's being pushed into these quarry sites. And I think at some point these little, these rich areas of great resource, um, like soapstone and agate and silvers and golds, and the Susquehannock being proficient, actually super skilled at working with silvers, pewters, coppers, you name it. Um, and unlike the copper found in America that's so pure and accessible on the surface, it doesn't need um, any kind of refinement done as far as uh, creating an alloy or, 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 or crushing um, ore up and, and pulling metal out of rock. This is what these guys were doing. They were they were taking these ores and they were obviously they were mining out pieces of ore and they were being shipped out or quarried out um, part of some trade network that I think you're going to find all links back to this lost culture in America um, that Cahota culture that mound building this culture that has this very very um, deep obsession with the sky and um, astrological alignments, things like that. Um, Cahota, it maps out, literally, if you look at these mounds and you look up at the sky, you're going to see Orion and the journey through the Milky Way, this whole idea that all ancient civilizations, the Egyptians, the Olmecs, the Mayans, the people from Cahota, mound builders, and I think this is his leftover memory that is ubiquitously shade it with the amnesia of some you know catastrophic event probably happening around 13,000 to 15,000 years ago um, 13,000 BCE about 15,000 years from our date now and um, more importantly we're going to emphasize a little bit more on the pottery thing um, so like I said I've been more conscientious of finding different pottery and trying to sort that as far as glass too so we can see what Europeans were in the area um, trading at the time um, get a lot of this black glass here this is very very French this is French glass we find that by the silver mine it's a very good thing to tie together these old you know colonial and later period pieces in the same area that the silver mine legends coming from so it's uh and then here's some different pottery shards I put out from different time periods that I've located and this is interesting here this is one of the best pieces I found prior to finding these two big pieces. And this piece is probably a little bit from more recent. You can see that there is state like very, very high technology putting this salt glaze and getting the colors to paint on and then come out that way when you actually cook it. And if you look closely, you see it streaked with green and that Mayan blue in there. And then you got these two arrows facing each other. This is probably part of a funerary pot that, that broke up and got washed down from the hills and ended up into the water. Um, you could tell that it was slipped on both sides at one point, but the slip from the inside is, is coming, chipped out, chipped away, and has broken down. Um, but again, this is probably a funerary pot because um, of it, and it's probably newer. This is probably circa 1200 to, to 1600, 1700, because this, this slip, you see it in, in Mayan stuff that's really old, but it hasn't been around for you know that, that long. Um, before you would have pieces, here's probably the oldest piece of pottery here, and you can still see the rim of it right here, the lip of the, whatever this was, this bowl or this pot, and that was the top, and you're seeing the lip of, of the pottery, but this is just completely just clay that has been heated, it definitely has been fired, 
but this is just again this is like a soapstone powder or limestone powder they made mixed up you know with some fibers and pitch or whatever they, they mixed into it and then cooked it and um, you get this uh, this high it's probably got high it's high in iron content too most likely um, but yeah this is a, a nice piece to find but if you find like a piece this big it just look like a rock it's so hard to differentiate the pottery from a stone when you're out Look, and, and this is definitely Susquehannock. This is a really old pottery shard, but you see these little lines in it? These little hash lines and these cross lines and this coloration with this um, this pitch, uh, not pitch, but this glaze, this primitive glaze, which is really, um, it, it's made out of a mineral that has a lot of iron in it. And I have a big piece of it over here called bog iron or whatever you want to call it thought this was a meteor at one point I had that tested it's not a meteor though it could fool you but this is like a hematite and they would make a lot of reds and brown dyes and, you know, out of this and they probably added some of this into the actual pottery mix before firing to give it some strength uh, it gives that gray that reddish hue of rust to it um, like this right here you see there's just a lot of a lot of iron in that piece of pottery but this is another really really old pottery shard and I'm going to chalk it up to, to Susquehanna, but this being, you know, from, from year zero or, or older. And then you get this newer stuff that has more of the Mayan-type coloration on it. Um, what you do, put this coloration, this green-blue right here, the same green-blue color, is found right here on the lines, on the actual lines. And you can see 